everyone and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer and I'm the host of this weekly pod, or pod, podcast broadcast put on by Sped Homeschool as well as the founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool. We at Sped Homeschool empower families to home educate children with learning challenges and I encourage you to check out our website at spedhomeschool.com to learn more about the resources and support that we have for families. Some of the best resources that we have on our website are the services offered by our partners who help us fund um, the work that we do like Bookshark who is sponsoring this broadcast. We'll hear more about the products that they offer families with struggling learners about halfway through our show. But if you're interested in checking them out ahead of time, you can head over to bookshark.com. And each month we focus on a new topic um, for our broadcasts and our blogs. And this month we are focusing on teaching your child at their own pace. And specifically today, we're talking about why homeschooling won't ruin your child um, with my special guest, Allison Morrow. Um, welcome, Allison, and thank you for joining us on this broadcast. This is a great title. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Peggy. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I'm glad you're back too. And um, yeah, for those of us who are popping on and joining us live, I would just encourage you if you know somebody that needs this encouragement that they're kind of feeling like, oh, I'm not sure I can do this homeschooling thing. We are going to tackle the biggest homeschooling questions that are out there today. And um, the I'm, excited. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, I'm excited to throw them at Allison and have these discussions <laughs> because we just want to, to prove to you that these things that you cycle through your head and and these, these defeating words that you say to yourself or, you know, just to maybe even you say them out loud to others, they really aren't true. And we want you to combat those with the truth of that you can do this. No matter how equipped you are, <laughs> yep. Um, yep. you can make it through this. So, so thank you, Allison, for joining us. I'm going to quick read a little bit of a bio I pulled off your website. Um, I'm sure there's more that you can share with us, and I'll have you kick that <laughs> off too. But um, Allison is an ex- classroom teacher and a veteran homeschool mom of two. <clears throat> And she, along with her husband, Dan, created Good Schooling to help families learn about homeschooling and decide if it's right for them. And if it is, make the transition smoothly as possible to prepare them for the road ahead. Um, so, yeah, so I'm so glad to have you, Allison. I, you are just, you have so much wisdom to share, and I'm so glad that um, you're bringing that to us and our community. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your homeschooling background as we get started, and then we'll kind of dive into these questions. And then if you are watching live, um, just know that you can add to the questions. If there's something that you, um, it may be the same ones we have, maybe not. So, so make sure that you put those in. Um, in the feed and um, wherever you're watching from. We'd love to be able to answer those as well. So, so yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so tell us a little about yourself, Allison. <laughs> sure, so, so like you said, I used to be a classroom teacher, um, but I actually, even before I had finished even getting my degree, I was actually uh, on the very first day of my classroom takeover as a student <laughs> teacher when everything was turned over to me, it was my classroom. I can still to this day, and this was back in like 1999, I can still remember standing in front of that class and looking out at those kids that I'd been working with all semester mm. and thinking, I love to teach, but I am never putting my kids in these seats. Like oh, I knew wow. I had not even mm. had my first job yet and I could already see how broken the system was mm. and just kept thinking, how on earth can this possibly help all right. these kids that I'd already, I'd already identified, this one's, he's in fifth grade, but he reads at a first grade level. And this mm. one's in fourth grade, but he's only doing like second grade math. And how right. on earth are we supposed to help these kids? And so, you know, I had no idea what kind of kids I was going to have, if I would have mm -hmm. kids who were, you know, neurologically normal or if they had issues or what. But I was like, I, I, I know that I need to homeschool my own kids. So I already mm. had that in my head before I was married, before I had kids. And right. so over the years, I've gone back and forth um, into the classroom. I've, I've taught a few times. I'm actually teaching at a hybrid program again this year. Wow. I should mm -hmm. not say again. I'm teaching again. First yeah. time in a hybrid program. Um, but, you know, it turns out I did have kids who had some unique challenges that mm -hmm. make learning not so easy. And so it, it was really a blessing in disguise that I already had it in my head that I wanted a homeschool. Right. Um, yeah. Because it was already on my radar. It was something mm -hmm. that we were already ready for. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really bumpy road uh, because I brought my schooling mindset yes. home with I've heard me. that from a lot of teachers. You know, oh, people always say, oh, I'm not trained as a teacher. It's going to be a disadvantage. And I think 
it, to most of the people who have been trained as teachers, it has been a bigger disadvantage. That's, you know, I tell people there are certain things that are very easy for me. I can navigate curriculum super easily. Mm -hmm. I understand, you know, if I get this mm -hmm. big box of stuff, I know what to do with it. It's not overwhelming to me. Yeah. Um, but being a trained teacher has mm -hmm. been majorly detrimental to my own homeschooling approach mm -hmm. because I had to take so long to detox myself from that public yeah. school mindset. Mm -hmm. And I mean, here I am, I've got uh, a almost 16 year old and a 13 and a half year old, they've been homeschooled since the beginning. Mm. I am still de-schooling. And I would say it's probably wow. been the last maybe four years that mm. I've done the most de-schooling and I've had the most aha moments and the biggest wow. like, you know, brain mm -hmm. explosion. Oh my gosh, this is what homeschooling really should look like. You know, right. it's, yeah. it's taken that long, but it has been a blessing to be mm. able to take all those lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. and turn around and tell parents, all right, I'm gonna save you so much time and right. so much stress and so much frustration. <laughs> Just listen to me because I'm mm -hmm. gonna share you with you some wonderful secrets. And it's all about de-schooling. And that I think yeah. is the biggest, it is the number mm. one thing. And I tell this to every family I meet, the number one biggest, most important step that you can take to set yourself up for long-term homeschooling success and to mm. unlock your true homeschooling so potential yeah. is to de-school. Mm. You've got mm -hmm. to start there before you look at curriculum, before you look at co-ops, before you think about anything else you've got to do school. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is, it's such a good thing to say um, because we always want to fit what we're doing inside that, that school mentality to make yeah. it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even gave a talk in Las Vegas this year to a bunch of educators and wow. I spoke on things I did in my homeschool. And afterwards they all came up to me and they said, that is our dream. That is the dream that we could do what you have done in your school. Yeah. But their perspective still was, we want to do it through the traditional education system. Right. And it right. just right. doesn't work. You, nope. you don't have the ability to do that. And so here is this freedom that is, you know, the ability to do it. And you're right. We can get really tangled up in thinking mm -hmm. that we have to make it look and feel like the traditional education system to be effective. Yep. Right. All right, myth one debunked. <laughs> right there. We're on a roll. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so the biggest thing that um, we often hear is about socialization. So, what do you have to tell parents about that? And I know within our community, we have specific concerns, especially with children who have social issues. They're on the right. spectrum. And how am I going to work on those social skills if I'm homeschooling and if I'm just with my kids? Um, right. But, but yes, <laughs> let's tackle that one. The, that one, the S word, the big one. This is like the yeah. biggest question in homeschooling, right? Mm. So. Overall, this is this is the thing that I, I always try to get pe parents to, to really think about first is the fact that when we want to learn anything, even us as adults, when we want to learn anything, any new skill, would it make more sense to buddy up with someone who knows more than you? Or would it make sense to buddy up with somebody who is at the exact same level that you are? Right. Like mm, it, it, if you want to get yeah. better at something, whether it's math, whether it's singing, whether it's dance, mm -hmm. whether it's football, whether it's social skills, mm -hmm. you want to be with people who are better at those things than you. And so when we look at the public school system, it puts kids together by age. And typically, developmentally speaking, kids will hit, you know, their their different social milestones, like, mm -hmm. you know, moving mm -hmm. from parallel play to playing together and being able right. to have conversations and learning mm -hmm. how to share and things like that. They all hit those things roughly kind of around at the same time. But mm -hmm. that means if we're putting them all together by age, then they are learning, quote unquote, from people who are just as clueless as they are. And right. so it doesn't make any sense to say, well, I want my child to be socialized. So I'm going to put my preschooler in with a bunch of preschoolers. Mm. He's going to come home with the same bad habits right. that all the other preschoolers have, you know? Right. And so once you once you see, oh, yeah, this just this whole idea of being with the same age just doesn't make a lot of sense. Hmm. Then it can be a little easier to see how, OK, so in homeschooling, okay, even worst case scenario, it's just you and your child because there are single families. You know, maybe it's, it's a single mom who just has a single child. Hmm. She's like, it's just the two of us. How is this child going to learn to socialize if it's just the two of us? Well, yes, right. obviously, you're going to want to look, look for, you know, play groups or 
um, activities and things where your child can make some friends. Yes, but just because right. it's just you and your child doesn't mean they're not going to learn social skills. They're learning from a master. You're way older. You know mm. what proper socialization looks like, what it looks right. like to have a conversation, what it looks like to share, what it looks like to take turns, what it looks mm. like to, you know, to function with other people in a way that makes society work. And so right. even if it is just you and your child, your child is still going to be socialized because you're going to be able to teach them. Now, mm -hmm. of course, and we, we have someone in the chat I can see who's saying as an autistic yeah. person, she said public school really messed her up. Yes, because when you when you put somebody mm -hmm. who is having struggles for whatever reason into that system, yeah. now not only are they trying to deal with all of these other random kids, mm -hmm. and even if they're all you know neurologically normal, they're yeah. still at your age. And so they're still gonna have all the same bad habits and, or not even bad habits, but just be clueless about things. Yeah. But then you also, with your own struggles, whatever those are, trying to process, trying to learn, that could be a disaster. Right. So mm -hmm. taking your child out of that system so that you in smaller, more controlled, more specifically selected kinds of groups, we're going to get together with these people who mm -hmm. I know, you know, people that you already know, we know these people from church, or we know these people from, um, you know, a, a, a group that we used to be a part of, or their right. neighbors, we already mm -hmm. know them. So there's already connection, we can start small, we can build up from yeah. there, it gives mm -hmm. you way more control, yeah. so that mm -hmm. you can make sure your child is learning the skills that they need. Yeah. Uh, but in an environment that's not going to be overly stressful, overwhelming, mm -hmm. you know, where you could talk even talk ahead of time with the parents, my child has these struggles, we're yes. aware that we're working on yes, them, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. can we, can we get together and hang out, you know, and yeah. other parents who have those, who have kids with same issues, mm -hmm. will be like, yes, finally, someone else who understands what it's like right. to have a kid who's got struggles and we need to figure this out, you know, mm -hmm. and particularly now with so many parents pulling yeah. their kids, mm -hmm. more and more opportunities, more groups, more play groups, yeah. co-ops, social groups, all these things popping mm -hmm. up that's making it even easier to find those kind of things. Right. Yeah. That loving, caring, informed group, mm -hmm. no matter how big it is, is it, it just makes it easier for our kids to practice and also not feel judged when they do and right. when they mess up. They, mm -hmm. they can have that, that community that they feel like, OK, it's safe for me to take a little step out here and try something. Mm -hmm. um, but like our, our guest who had made the comment before and <laughs> saying, I, I'm sure, pretty sure I suffer from PTSD from my school experience, so that funny. I read a book on autism recently that said the majority of people with on mm -hmm. the spectrum do suffer from PTSD because of the, that social experience in the school system mm -hmm. because they felt so judged. that. Yeah. And then you're taking that academic stress and the social stress right and it's like doubly right. mm -hmm. as bad for for the kids that struggle in that area or who are bullied um mm -hmm. and suffer trauma from that so yeah um, and so another yeah. thing too i just thought of is the fact that the the public school that whole approach that whole classroom idea is so artificial that's not mm -hmm. what the real world is like and so when you have if you have a child that you know is going to have trouble with social issues wouldn't it make more sense to start them out in real world situations rather than yeah. throwing them for 12 years into a system that they're never going to see again, that mm, doesn't even have mm -hmm. any bearing on the real world. Put right. them through this nightmare of trying to navigate all of this craziness mm -hmm. and then come out of that and have them be like, okay, well, I, I, I finally figured out how to function in there. And now you want me to function out here? This doesn't look anything like this. Right. So it mm -hmm. makes so much more sense to say, okay, let's just spend our time in an, an environment that actually is going to be what life is actually like, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So true. We have a question from, from one of our viewers on um, YouTube. And by the way, we're um, broadcasting live right now on YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope. So you may be watching from a variety of different places, but just know that you can put your comments in the link and, and we'll um, get to those. But Lisa says, um, but isn't it important for the child to learn how to be around all types of children and different types of people, not cherry picked for lack of a better phrase? Well, yes. Over time, absolutely. Mm. Um, but I think that's the thing we need to remember too, is that this is a long-term process. Yes. And so, you yeah. know, if you have a five-year-old who is autistic, since maybe, you know, we'll just use that since we've kind of been mm -hmm. talking about that. Right. If you have a five-year-old who's autistic, 
there are going to be specific skills that you want to work on with them to prepare them to then be able to move on to being with older children or younger children or different kinds of children. Obviously, for the mm-hmm. whole of their their you know childhood, you don't want to keep them in a bubble, right. but you do need to see it as phases and, mm-hmm. and prioritize what is the most important thing to be working right now. And I think, yeah. Lisa, that your question is true for any child, mm-hmm. neurologically you know, challenged or not, every child, every person, every human being needs to learn how to interact with people who are older and younger and look different and are different socioeconomic levels and all these different things. Right. When you're in a school, depending on where that school is, it can be very homogenous. I grew up in the suburbs of Mm -hmm. Chicago. Everybody looked exactly like me and we Mm -hmm. all lived pretty much the same way. There was no diversity in my school. Um, So, I mean, just because you go to public school does not mean you're Mm -hmm. going to have diversity. Depends on where you live. Yeah. But, but that environment is going to be so inherently chaotic for a child who has these kind of struggles. Mm -hmm. It makes so much more sense to pull back and start them off in easy to manage situations and then build up their skills from there so that over mm-hmm. time they can learn how to function with lots of different people in lots of different places and times mm-hmm. and things and things like that. Yeah. But I yeah. think you have to do it in phases. Yeah, that's a really good point because yeah, we um we oftentimes will will think right. that our um throwing our kids to the wolves <laughs> is the best way to train them, but but really it can cause a lot of issues that we then have to backtrack for. It's better to just prepare them and then take those tiny steps as you see that they're ready. And um, that's really what I heard you saying, Allison. And I think it's so important. Lisa followed up um, saying that my son is 13, now homeschooled, been in public school since four, up to the pandemic for the last seven years. So, um, so Lisa, you're probably seeing this on the flip side. I know a lot of parents um, will will realize that there, there was a little bit of socialization happening um, and um, social skills built. But um, I know we had to untrain a lot of mm. social skills mm-hmm. <laughs> that I didn't want my kids to have <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, so thanks for that, that comment. Um, yes, <laughs> she says the flip, <laughs> the flip side. side. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, I want to make sure we get on to our next question. But if you have some really good, you know, I, I think I'm going to mess my child up in this area. Um, we definitely want to hear your questions, too. But um, the next one I want to address, Allison, is, you know, I'm not a professional teacher or therapist. I'm sure that we're going to have gaps um, in our learning. Um, so what yeah. what do you have to say <laughs> to parents who are worried about those those gaps that they're going to create. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, we put all this heavy burden on us. We do. That yes. um, oh. I'm just going <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> I, I can't, you know, teach. This curriculum is overwhelming. You know, there, I have, I've heard so many excuses around this. But, um, yeah. yeah, so what do you have to say to encourage parents who are kind of at this stopping point? Well, the first thing I would say is that as a trained teacher, I can tell you my children – who have been homeschooled forever will be homeschooled in one way or another through the rest of high school. Mm -hmm. They will have gaps in their education. Your child will have gaps in their education. Every single person on the planet, regardless of what kind of education they have, will have gaps in their education. And here's why, Mm -hmm. is because you can't learn all the things there are in the world to learn. Like (laughs) there's such an an absolutely amount, insane amount of information out there. There Mm -hmm. is no way that you can teach your child everything. Yeah. And this mm-hmm. we put this expectation on ourselves as parents that we have we have to teach them all the stuff. They have to know all the stuff. Uh-huh. But the thing is, is that even when you look at public school, let's go back to that, because mm-hmm. that's what we tend to compare ourselves to, even though we shouldn't. Right. Yes. Even public school, if you look across from district to district, even in one specific state or from state to state, you'll see they do different things at different times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and even across that, you'll see depending on how that district functions, teachers mm-hmm. may be able to choose. Well, I, this year I'm gonna do these books. I, 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 English has always been my thing. That's what I always teach when I was a teacher, it was English. Mm-hmm. And so I think in terms of the literature that we would study, the poems that we would study, the plays that we would study, I right. change it up all the time. It wasn't the same thing every mm. single year. And so kids might have come into my classroom and they might've read 
Tuck Everlasting and The Giver, which I think are fabulous books. Um, but then the next year we would maybe read, you know, My Side of the Mountain and uh, Julie and the Wolves. So, hmm. okay, can your child read every book? Are they going to learn every single thing? Right. There's no other way that you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so when we think too about children who, you know, who move, right? They go yeah, interstate move, maybe exactly. they're with military mm -hmm. or they're missionaries or whatever. They go from one school to another. This school teaches things totally different schedule than this one did. Mm -hmm. They're going to be things that they miss, right? Yeah. We have to get away from this idea of, oh, because I'm a teacher, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to teach all the right things or I'm, I'm not going to be able to teach everything. The most important thing to focus on is teaching your children the skills that they need to learn in order to learn. Because mm. then as they go through their life and they come up against one of those things that, gosh, right. I don't remember ever learning about that. Mm -hmm. They know how to go figure it out, whether it's yeah. just because they're just curious, like they're just interested. I don't mm -hmm. know anything about that. I want to learn about that. Yeah. Or if it's for a job or if it's for an interview or if it's for some opportunity or something they want to do, mm -hmm. if we can equip them with the skills that they need to go learn, then yes. they can learn anything. But we will mm -hmm. never be able to teach them everything, even when it comes to things like math that is very skilled based. Even if you mm -hmm. use a program that goes step by step by step by step, all of us went through, you know, if you were in public school, you went through right. a program like that. Mm -hmm. How much of that do you remember? Right. Oh, there yeah. are things all the time. <laughs> that I'm like, I had a really good attendance. I didn't miss like months and months of work, but there's a lot of stuff I do not remember from math. But when I oh, need yeah. to learn it, I know what to do to go figure it out. Right. Exactly. So, mm hmm you know, take like, get that, that weight off your shoulders. Like you said, Peggy, mm. we put this weight on ourselves and make ourselves yeah. so responsible for mm. so much stuff. You don't know what, what mindset your child is in on any given day. And you can be at the top That's of your point. homeschooling game mm -hmm. that day. If your child is not in a place to absorb that information. <laughs> right. They just miss And in it. 20 years, yeah. I'm going to go be, my, my mom never taught me that. You're right. Like, I did too. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I worked for three hours to put it together. But you uh -huh. didn't remember because you weren't, you, you weren't there, you know? Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you think of it that way and you realize you're only part of the equation, you can't control yes. what your child is actually going to learn. Mm -hmm. That's when we, that's when it sometimes oh, gets a little easier so to say. so to think about. Yes. I, yeah. I can't do it all. I can't mm -hmm. teach it all. Yeah. But I don't need to. I just need to equip them yes. to be able to learn. Yeah. And I think that's why we talk about teaching our children how to be lifelong learners so much as homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. Because I see that now with my adult children is that they are inquisitive. They want to find things out. They are always trying to learn something new because mm -hmm. they enjoy it. They yeah. have found that learning is fun. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the greatest gift I could give them as part of my homeschooling Absolutely. was that... Yes. This is this is something that will will bring you joy if you you don't dismiss it as this is just something I did in school and yeah. it's a burden. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but there will be gaps. And, and I was telling Allison this even before the broadcast is when I graduated my oldest, like the month I was graduating, I looked at him. And I'm like, but I haven't taught you everything. You can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just realized, you know, God just this, this voice came into my head saying, Peggy, you don't know everything either. <laughs> OK, I'm Let humble. <laughs> I remember. OK. <laughs> oh. So, so yeah, um, but, but yeah, we have had a couple more comments while we've been discussing this, um, that, um, Lisa had said that her homeschool or her public school area is, is pretty diverse. And so that, well, that just means your community is diverse. And so, um, Kara Sue said that she remembers very little of middle school math and, yeah. um, and yeah, but then even before that said that, um, that, he actually thinks that it's easier to expose kids to diversity when homeschooling. Kids can learn about cultures and people more in depth than in public school. And also just your, your homeschool community. And if you're in a place like Lisa's and you have a diverse community, your homeschooling community is going to be diverse too. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's something to draw on to get your, yeah. your kids more connected. And really, I have found that as a homeschooler, then we, we go into each other's homes. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just about us meeting at these 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 fabricated places as we really get yeah. to know the culture and the family and yeah. and dig in more with one another than just having the surface relationship mm -hmm. that we do so much when we're within a school system. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, 
So anyways, um, question about homeschool requiring COVID immunizations. Um, so this has to do with law. Um, and so do you want to tackle, Allison, why homeschool law <laughs> is different <laughs> than public school law? <laughs> yeah, so the laws for homeschool vary not just from state to state, but even within some states, it varies from district to district. Yes. So there, the only thing that we can say across the board for the entire United States is that it is legal to homeschool your child mm -hmm. and it is legal to pull your child out at any point during the year to start homeschooling them. Yes. Those are the only two things that are true for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I, I try to keep up with the law side of things as much as I can. It's a little hard with 50 states, but mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, currently there are no states that are requiring homeschoolers to be fully vaccinated. Um, as far as I know, do not quote me or say, well, Allison said I didn't have to because <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But as far as I know, I don't believe there are any states that require full vaccinations the same way that they do for public school. Um, and because there are so many states that have things like, um, um, oh, I'm forgetting the word, um, medical and uh, exemptions, 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 yes. medical exemptions, mm -hmm. philosophical ex exemptions and religious right. exemptions, even mm -hmm. in states where they have very heavy um, regulation for immunizations, mm -hmm. typically there are still ways that you can get out of that depending on what your situation is because of right. those, um, those mm -hmm. exemptions. Yeah. So yeah. check with your state's, le your state level homeschooling advocacy group with stuff right. like that. That's what mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. That's, that's a good, um, good advice mm -hmm. because yeah, it's, it is. Different. And it's changing all the time. It's, it is changing all you the know. time. So, so getting plugged into your, your state homeschooling laws, um, is important. If you go to our website, it's bedhomeschool.com, which you'll see on the bottom of the screen. Um, we do, if you just do a search on laws, um, or getting started on our homeschool help page, um, there'll be a, a link on there to go to your homeschool laws. And then all of the states are listed on a page on our website. So you can go straight there and and read what that is and those those pages are updated by those state organizations so that's um extremely helpful um lisa had commented and she said I, I hope you'll both do a live one day on the journey to picking proper curriculum or steps to figure that out i'm struggling with which one to go um so lisa head to the sped home school website um, we have a, we have, we did a whole month on picking curriculum, or if you do a search on this YouTube channel, we did a lot of interviews on picking curriculum, especially for struggling learners. Um, so, um, and then also on our website, we have curriculum partners and we've, we've vetted every single curriculum that's on our website to make sure that it has more of a hands-on self-paced approach that you can kind of take it at the pace of your student, which is what we're talking about this month. Um, so so definitely head there because she did ask is there a good place on your website to pick correctly um, yes there is so um, we're happy to help you with that and that's one of the things i i interview new partner organizations every week and talk to them about what they're doing and the products that they're offering we have lots of tutors on there as well and like allison um consultants that will work one-on-one -on -one with you and her website has a lot of great information too you've got a blog that is really helpful for parents in making that transition, like you said, over yep. to homeschooling. Yep. So, yeah, so, yeah. But, um, all right, well, we're kind of at a stopping point. So I'm gonna take a break and we'll hear from our sponsor and then we're gonna come back and we've got um, at least two or three more questions. But if you, you've got some yeah. some big, like, uh, this is this is what I'm struggling with. Can I really homeschool um, or can I keep this up? You know, a lot of people have dove in and, um, and are going, oh, I don't know if I can do this for the long run. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that's a good question to start out with when we come back. It's like, will I have the endurance for this? Yes, exactly. So think about that while, um, while I um, bring up our message from our, our sponsor. And I just want to thank um, Bookshark for sponsoring this episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. And I'm going to read a little bit about them. So um, Bookshark says, was the best thing I've done for myself and my kids. That's what Dana said. Tracy says, I definitely regret not starting Bookshark sooner. It's been such a great fit for our family. Well, we at Sped Home School agree. Uh, we've had a lot of parents come to us and say that Bookshark is a really good um, fit for their family. So listen how you can jump in on this Bookshark bandwagon. Start by heading to bookshark.com. On the Bookshark website, you can request a free catalog, download samples, and see scope and sequence charts of what is 
always taught at each level. There's also a blog at bookshark.com slash blog with hundreds of articles written by dozens of authors. The Bookshark site just has so much free information about how to teach your kids at home. And you can use it whether you use Bookshark or not. Another example is you can get a free unit study and try out the Bookshark way of literature-based learning at bookshark.com slash freebies. And the new unit study for 2021 is about volcanoes. Well, let me just share two more quotes. Jill says, we switched to Bookshark language arts this year. This was the best decision ever. We love how everything ties together. I can tell it. I can't tell you how grateful I am for Bookshark. We are working forward to adding more subjects next year. And Catherine says, pulling my kids out of public school and getting Bookshark's full program program saved my sanity. It was the best parenting decision we've made. We're so much happier now versus the kids staring lifelessly at screens all day. The open and go component and high quality literature for science, history, and language arts is amazing. See if Bookshark is a best fit for your family like these moms. Visit bookshark.com to get a free catalog and then add slash freebies to get the free unit study. So um, thank you, Bookshark, again for sponsoring this episode and um, just for all that you do to, um, to help sp sponsor our work here at SPED Homeschool. And if you don't know, um, SPED Homeschool, we are a nonprofit. And so um, the, the work that we produce is, um, is free. The majority of it is free to, to parents. And so sponsors and partners like Bookshark actually support our work and make sure that we have resources for you. So, um, so welcome back, Allison. I see we've had some, some chatter, um, since I, I, um, started the, the sponsor spot and um, haven't even had a chance to, to read through them but um but yeah it um lisa said my my son craves religious based curriculum well oh praise god <laughs> don't you love it when they they want um something that um just teaches their their soul as well as um their mind so um and we do have a lot of things on our website for that we, we actually are a christian-based organization although we we welcome anyone to come and and use the resources on our website so um so yeah you'll find a, a lot of different options on there so <laughs> and she said you ladies rock Aww, thank <laughs> well, you thank you <laughs> we, we've, we've just been down this road further than most of you and and so uh, I, I want to talk about that. I know I've been homeschooling for 19 years. And Allison, how long have you been homeschooling? Um, so it's, you know, I always say I started homeschooling the day my kids were born. Because yeah, that's, yeah. There's no difference between parenting and, and teaching, right? Yes, it's, exactly. It is literally, it's all the same thing. So mm -hmm. going on, it'll be 16 years in December. So Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah, so this next question, longevity, you know, can I do it? And can I make this sustainable? I mean, that wasn't even a question I had, but I really feel like this is something that we need to answer. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you have to say to our parents about that? I, you know, I think one of the biggest um, enemies of long-term homeschooling is the overwhelm. Yeah. It's the, mm -hmm. this feeling of, I have to do so much, which I think, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of talked about that already, feeling like there's this weight, I have so much, I have to teach them. Yeah. Feeling like there's so much that we need to do that there are all these things that we're we're supposed to do as homeschoolers. Hmm. And I think we burn ourselves out because we we're expecting so much of ourselves. Yeah. And I think that a hmm. big reason for that is because even though we always we know we're not supposed to compare what we do to public school, it's mm -hmm. what we tend to do, whether we do it um, right. you know, consciously or not. And whenever we compare, we go, well, gosh, they're in school for six hours a day or more. And they're covering all of this stuff and they're doing so much and hmm. all the activities and all of the stuff and all of the, the little crafty things and all of the papers and the essays and the uh -huh. workbooks and the tests. And, and so certainly if I'm going to show that I, I have done my kids good with, homes hmm. with homeschooling, I need to do at least that or more to justify that I, that I made this decision. Hmm. And so I think that's what ends up burning so many of us out is that we feel like yeah. we have so much to do. And mm. over the last year, I have personally been making, I've been kind of on this journey of trying to figure out what is the core of what education uh. truly ought to be. Because I think, um, and actually now in a place where I know we have mm. overcomplicated education. Yeah. And a mm -hmm. big reason why public school looks the way it does 
is because of the reasons for why it was started and it was not started for education. Yes, and that's going to exactly. take us down a whole different road that I will mm-hmm. not go down because that's really- Oh, I give a whole hour talk on that. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but I always recommend there's a fantastic book called Passion Driven Education. And the whole first mm-hmm. section of that book looks at the foundation of public schooling and why it is the way it is. Right. And when you when you understand why the founding fathers of education structured it the way that they did, you mm-hmm. understand why they made it take so much time and why they insist right. on doing so much stuff and why over time they've kept stuffing it with more and more and more and more mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with actual education. Right. And what I have yep. come to mm-hmm. believe is that all all we truly need to do now, I'm talking like the very, very core, not not that you should never do anything but these things, but right. the core of what we need to be focusing on is kind of what I already mentioned. It's the stuff that sets your children up to be able to learn whatever they need to learn. Hmm. It's knowing how to read. It's knowing how to communicate. It's knowing basic math right. and it's knowing critical thinking. Mm. If they can, if they have a grasp of those four things, right. then it doesn't matter what else you do in your homeschool. They are prepared to learn anything else that they need. Now, mm. obviously, as parents, it is also our job to make sure that our children can function in the real world. And right. part of that is socialization. It's understanding cultures. It's understanding mm-hmm. different people. It's knowing how to to to. Um, it's knowing how to work with other people, how to collaborate, yeah. how to um, live in community, mm-hmm. if, you know, basic manners, things like that. Right. Um, but we tend to hyper focus on all of the academics. Hmm. And even yeah. as homeschoolers, we tend to kind of we bulk everything up with that and then we fill it in with like all the other stuff. Oh, yeah. We, we should probably find a playground. We're going to put that in here. We should probably right. do some like music stuff. So we'll kind of put that in here. Hmm. instead of saying, okay, what is going to make my child the most well-rounded individual they can be? How can I set them up to be the best version Mm -hmm. of themselves that they can be? And how can I make sure they are aware of what all is out there in the world? Hmm. And being aware of what's out there does not require deep study. It it just requires exposure. And so by, by really focusing on those four critical skills of reading, communication, uh, math, basic math, and, you know, like everyday math, and mm-hmm. then the critical thinking, being able to to think critically and reason, mm-hmm. when we focus on those, and then, I mean, that that does not take that much time. If that's right. the no, basis of exactly. what you're focusing on, when you mm-hmm. think of your whole day as a family, yeah, if you're focusing on that, even if you're working with a child who maybe has dyslexia or processing disorders or something where it's it's going to take longer every mm-hmm. day than it would take for a normal child it's right. still not going to take six hours it's no, not going to exactly. take four yes. hours you know mm-hmm. and so you focus on those things and then you expose with everything else you expose mm. with videos and with library books and with documentaries and with museums and with um people meeting people and, right. and interviewing people find it you find someone in your, your community who has some incredible experience or a veteran who served in a war mm. or someone who who's moved here from another country. Yeah. And you take yeah. the person out for lunch and you say, tell us, mm-hmm. let, let, tell us about yourself. Tell us about this experience. Tell us about this thing. And so you expose them to stuff so that they have an idea of what's out there in the world. And yeah. then they can decide for themselves, what do they want to deep dive on? And mm-hmm. when you see that your mm-hmm. child gets super excited about whatever, then you say, "Ooh, all right, let's let's spend yeah. some time on this." Yeah, mm-hmm. because the opposite of that is saying we're going to spend equal amounts of time on all of these different things, whether you're interested in them or not. Hmm. And mm-hmm. some of it's going to sink in, and your right. child's going to be like, "Man, I wish we could do more of this." Yeah, and a yeah. lot of it is going to whoosh totally exactly. or in one ear and out the other because uh-huh. they don't care. Right, and then that's when you get that in twenty years, mom, you never taught me about X, Y, Z, and you're like, "Yeah, huh, I did." Right. You just didn't care. So rather than fighting against our children's natural interests and inclinations, mm-hmm. if we spend time exposing them, fo- focusing on these skills and making right. sure we get those skills really well, and then exposing them to all these other things, first of all, mm. way more interesting, way more yeah. enjoyable, enjoyable, and so much pressure off of our shoulders of yeah. having to cram mm-hmm. it all in. And when you take that more relaxed, simplified approach to education, it Mm -hmm. is much more sustainable. You're not going to burn yourself out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And realizing too, that 
it is a it is a marathon. And that mm-hmm. 18 is not your dead, it's not your deadline. It's not your child's oh. expiration date, no. you know? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, so you, you get what you can in mm-hmm. between now and then. Yep. And if you focus on those skills, mm-hmm. then at least, you know, Hey, when they go, they've got what they need. Right. Yes, they absolutely. Exactly. Need. And so they have easier. something even more because when you do that, what you're focusing on, you, you hone in on what their interests are and their talents and they actually know then when they graduate, this is what I like. This is, mm-hmm. I've got, you know, they, they've delved into that, those areas and they know more about themselves and mm-hmm. what they're good at. When you see all these kids graduate from the just typical traditional school system, they don't. They've been yep. so schooled in every single subject that they have no idea. I remember graduating from high school going, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to, I guess I like this and I guess I like that, but I mean, I just picked a major because it sounded good and yeah, exactly. yep. <laughs> you just, but I know with all of my kids, they were very set and driven because that's the, how we homeschooled was, mm-hmm. well, let's, what are you interested in? How are we going to dive into this? And high school is a joy. I don't know if it has been for you, but when you homeschool this way, it is fun because it's so fun to watch your kids unravel. Mm-hmm. who they are and really discover that. Yeah. Yep. So Yeah, I totally so, yeah. agree. It's it is you're saving your child the stress of going into their adult years having no clue what their strengths are, what they really yeah. want to do, where they should spend their lives, mm-hmm. and that feeling of I'm supposed to be doing it right now. Like if, right. if you exactly if, as they hit those high school years, as you start kind of treating that as like, okay, well this is like this is like your soft launch. <laughs> you yes, know? exactly. Like, uh-huh. you, get to, you know, you can you get to maybe get a job, and we're doing some mm-hmm. school, and but you're living at home. You've got your safety net, and we're right. figuring it out. And you know, mm-hmm. and then they can ease their way into that world instead of. Yeah. I mean, I think about what an incredible like culture shock it was for me to go from living mm-hmm. at home in high school mm-hmm. to living on my own in college. And being right. responsible for all this stuff and having to manage all this stuff. And mm-hmm. I was one of those people who knew what I wanted to do since I was like five. Like I wow. started volunteering in my brother's preschool class when I was eight years old. Like I wanted to be a teacher. Like <laughs> I knew it, you know. You were one of those few. <laughs> I was one of those few. Yes, right. absolutely. But, you know, but interestingly enough, if I had more opportunity to explore different ways that I could use that skill and that, lo- yes. that, that drive right. that I had, mm-hmm. I would have... T- followed a very different path because it mm. turned out I actually was not a big fan of teaching <laughs> children. I, I was not a big fan of teaching children. I love what I do now. Right. Yeah. Teaching, yeah. teaching adults, working mm-hmm. with adults and teaching, helping, helping them to teach their kids. Right. I yeah. didn't know coaching was a form of teaching. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. everyone, yeah. I said, I want to teach, which automatically just meant you go in a classroom. Right. So as my kids start mm-hmm. saying, oh, like, this is interesting. This is interesting. We mm-hmm. pick apart, like, what are all the things that you can That's do with that? That's a good that? point. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and then yep. as a homeschooler, you've got so much time to help them check you out do. those things. Yes, exactly. It's such a wonderful opportunity mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. Yeah. I found the same truth. My daughter loves fashion, but the whole idea of going to fashion school, like Mm -hmm. gave her just panic attacks because she has a lot of anxiety issues. And Mm -hmm. I said, well, let's look at this industry from a different perspective. You know, how else can you use your talents without having to go to fashion school Mm -hmm. um, and feel and go into this industry that could just eat you alive? Because yeah. that is, you're just not going to survive that. Yeah. <laughs> not many yeah. do. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we, we had some good heart to hearts. And I love that time with my kids when we can really just say, well, well let's dream on this together and pray about mm-hmm. this and, and let's see mm-hmm. where we go. So, um, yeah. so such good advice um, that, that, and that it will, it will keep you for that, that long haul. Um, if you keep that perspective and not, again, like you said at the beginning, you know, putting in all these ac- academics and then just trying to fit th- those things yeah. that are so important. And yeah. and then at the end, you're going to look and go, why didn't I? Um, we don't mm-hmm. want you to do that. We want you to say, yeah. <laughs> focus on the important and, and right. say, yes. I mean, I look back now at all the things we did, academically even, and go, mm-hmm. I can't believe it. <laughs> we, we just fit it all in. I don't know how it happened, but you know, that's, that, that's what I want you to, to have the perspective of. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So, so, you know, we were talking about curriculum a while ago and I know a lot of parents come and say, well, I just can't afford, I can't afford any curriculum. So they, they get what's free or I can't afford any accredited curriculum. So I feel like I'm just doing my child a disservice using what's out there. How do you respond to these, these families? Um, you know, I think this is, and I think this is another kind of holdover from that public school mentality. We have this idea that curriculum is somehow like magic. Like if you right. pick just the right thing, it's almost that idea of like, there's, you know, there's one, everyone has like one soulmate out there, right? Yeah. There's like, there's this one curriculum. And if I find just that one mm. curriculum, everything's going to fall in place. My children will love yeah. to learn and it will mm -hmm. be a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, and they think too, like if I have just the right curriculum, then it will like it will give them just the right education as yeah. if there was mm -hmm. one education that like we're all striving to achieve like there's this one standard that we're mm -hmm. all supposed to be aiming for that is not true there is not one official education that every single person needs to have hmm. um, unless we strip it down to like the most ridiculously bare bones and things will like you do right. need to know how to read and you do need to know how to write but i right. mean you know come mm -hmm. on so we yeah. all know that right yeah. but outside of that there there is no one specific you know, body of knowledge that everybody needs to have. Mm -hmm. And I think parents, again, from this feeling of like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that there are like these experts doing. And so if I'm going to do right. it nearly as good yeah. as they're doing it, then I've got to use the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they think, well, if I have just the right curriculum and I use it exactly as the publisher tells me, then that's right. going to like unlock, you know, my child's education and everything will, will fit just right. Mm. And what I tell parents all the time is that curriculum is just a tool it is exactly. only a tool oh, and it doesn't matter how response. expensive yes. or mm -hmm. beautifully packaged or you know how many pieces and how many different ways you can use a particular curriculum that doesn't mean that it's going to be the right thing for you and it doesn't right. mean that it, it's mm -hmm. somehow better than everything else that's out there yeah it doesn't matter if a resource is free it doesn't matter if it's expensive it doesn't matter if it was something that you just put together by yourself at the library or if it was something mm -hmm. that a publisher put together Everything is just a tool that you as the principal of your homeschool get to decide mm, how to use. And right. just because curriculum comes with tests and quizzes and coloring pages and, and you know, flashcards and eight million different little things right. does not mean you have to use every little thing. And if you take stuff out, your children will still learn. Like yeah. it doesn't mean that yeah. you're somehow mm -hmm. negating the power of this, this program by taking right. things apart, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, so so the the idea of finding just the right curriculum, I think when you when you start to realize that curriculum is putty in your hands and you can mm. do whatever you want to. With I it, love that image. It yeah. takes some again. It takes some yeah. of that pressure off of having to find just the right thing. Like mm. sometimes you're going to find a program and it just doesn't matter how you use it. It's just not going to work with you. You know, it's this is just for whatever reason it just doesn't click and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But realize, you know, because I know there are a lot of us who. Uh, you know, we spend money on curriculum and then we get to like November, like around this time of year. And you're like, OK, we are slogging our way through this. And I right. just, you know, but doggone it, I spent 450 bucks and we're going to finish this thing, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, OK, so do you want to is, is four hundred fifty dollars what is reasonable to you to to have paid to be miserable for the next six months? Like, <laughs> that's a great, you know, I mean, like, exactly. is it really like, yes. that's really important, you know, uh -huh. but it doesn't mean that you have to turn around and go spend 450 bucks on something else. Either. Yes. Like, that's true. Let's yes. Take mm -hmm. a look at what you have. That's one of the resources I have is on how to adapt at your, your curriculum. And mm -hmm. one of the first steps on there is look at every single piece that this thing came with and say, mm -hmm. do I really want to use this? And if you don't, yeah throw it away. You mm -hmm. don't have to or keep give it. it to somebody else or give it away. Or, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, depending on what it is true, you know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. throw away stuff someone else might want, you know, yeah. but you know, but, and one of the first things I tell people to throw away is the schedule because oh, yes. almost every curriculum comes with, okay, week one, mm -hmm. do these things. And then week two, do this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, here's your schedule. Right. And talk about stress. Like yes. two weeks mm -hmm. in and you've missed a day and you're like, we're off schedule. We have, you know, and it, it throws everything into chaos. The first thing I tell people is to get rid of the schedule because the schedule means absolutely nothing to your family. That is something yeah. that publishers put mm -hmm. in because they feel like they should, because there are some families who like to have that guide. Mm -hmm. But heavens, if it's going to stress you out, there is no reason to follow exactly. it. And those of us with yep. kids who need 
some extra help with mm-hmm. school, right. chances are they're never going to stay on that schedule. And yes. so you're just constantly mm-hmm. going to be going, oh my gosh, we're so far behind. Yeah. And then you try to do it on Saturdays or in the evenings and you just ruin your family time and it is stress. Yes. 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 So, you know, I don't even remember what your original question is. All I know. (laughs) Just about curriculum. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Yes. That is the bottom line is that you are the boss of your homeschool and you Mm -hmm. get to decide what curriculum to use and how to use it and when to use it and when to move on and when to say, we're going to spend a little more time and when to say, Mm -hmm. We're going to put all the books away yeah, for a month or maybe exactly. more, and we'll come back to things later. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing, too. Just because it's not working for you this year doesn't yeah. mean it might not work for you in six months. Sometimes it's just a waiting right. game, yeah. and it really is more mm-hmm. about taking a break than it is about throwing everything away and starting something else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had, we had one comment from a viewer talking about digital curriculum that you can find lots of things online printed out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's just so many different options now, especially so, since COVID. Um, they're yeah. just pick and choose and mix and match. And, and I know we've had we've had conversations about this before. So so definitely look on our channel um, if you have any questions about curriculum or using resources, um, all of that. But um, Creative Minds Homeschooling even commented and she said, uh, we've been homeschooling since my son was in preschool and I'm still looking for all the right curriculum. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a given. But yes, you, you find out what works. It's a work in progress, she said. And um, yeah, um, so, so um, Lisa also said, what curriculum helps a child be a well-rounded learner? Um, mm. I think that that's a good question, but it's probably not curriculum, is it? <laughs> it I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think curriculum will round out your child. I think if, if there is any type of curriculum that might, I would say it's a literature-based curriculum mm-hmm. where you are mm-hmm. reading so many books because the magic about books mm. is that they allow right. you to live so many different lives and experience yes. so many different things uh-huh. and have and discussions so, with your kids on so many different topics yes, too. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if there was any particular approach or curriculum that was going to come close to mm-hmm. being one that we could say, this will make a well-rounded child. I would say it's something that's going to be literature based, not book based because books could be textbooks and heaven knows that right. textbooks don't change anybody's lives, yeah. but all oh, those books living can books change lives. and, and lit- good literature. Yes. And even if it's audio books, I mean, we do a lot yes. of audio and it really does That's add not to the richness. No, it's not cheating. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I have one more question and, um, and then we're also going to hear from Allison about where you can find um, her resources, but let's touch on just a couple minutes about, you know, I have lots of parents who come and say, I'm just really bad at this subject. How am I going to help my child with what math or writing and, um, and all of these things. And instead of beating ourselves up, what can we do? (laughs) To, to help our child maybe love this t- subject and maybe help ourselves love this subject too as yeah. we homeschool. Yeah. Well, I will say that is one of the most fabulous things about homeschooling now versus maybe 30 years ago is that it doesn't matter what subject you feel like you're not equipped to teach. There is somebody mm-hmm. out there who is. And it might yes. be somebody online. Mm-hmm. It might be a video series on YouTube. It might right. be a... Um, you know, another homeschooler in your, in your uh, homeschooling community, we did a co-op with just one other family for a couple of years. The mom loves, the other mom loves science. Mm. I love science too, but I hate teaching it. It is not my thing. (laughs) She loves to teach science and it was the perfect match because Mm -hmm. I love to teach writing and she didn't feel like she was a strong writer. And Mm -hmm. so once a week we would go to their house and I would teach literature, or actually literature was the one thing we didn't do. I'd teach writing and grammar, mm-hmm. spelling and stuff like that for an hour. And then she would teach science for like an hour and a half because science took a lot more time. And, um, and it was beautiful because yeah. all our kids together all got to learn from mm. people who were really good and really passionate about teaching the things that they love to teach. Right. It was not, you know, it, it cost me the gas to get there. Mm-hmm. They were good friends of ours, so our kids loved to get together. So it yeah. was more socialization. Right. Yeah. So, you know, between co ops and just straight up tutors mm-hmm. in your neighborhood, online yeah. options, curriculum that teaches for you. There are mm-hmm. so many programs that are like DVD based or they've got streaming video and they teach right. it for you. You exactly. and your child can sit together, sit mm-hmm. and watch the videos with them and learn. 
But yeah. one of the things yeah. that has been most clear to me this year in particular, because I, I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm teaching at a, a hybrid program. Mm -hmm. and the reason we're there is because my girls, my my high schoolers specifically, really wanted to go back to this program. We did this. We tried it a few years ago. She wanted mm. to go back for high school to do this program. And so we're like, OK, we'll give it a go. Well, she's in geometry this year. And y'all, I have not looked at geometry since I was literally her age, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And I lived my whole life saying, I'm not a math person. Mm. I'm, a math. I'm an English person. I'm a writing English literature person. Like, that's my jam. Math, not so much, right? And what I have realized is that the older you are, the easier it is to learn things. It is. Yeah. And y'all, yeah. I'm learning mm -hmm. geometry and I'm learning it because I have to help her at home. It's a hybrid program. She only gets instruction in class two days a week. Right. The rest yeah. we do at home. Mm -hmm. And so it has been fantastic for both of us because I'm yeah. showing, I'm, I'm uh -huh. telling her, okay, first of all, this is mom learning alongside you. <laughs> so I can't guarantee you're going to get everything right. Mm -hmm. But let me teach you how to figure things out when you don't know how to do them. So yes. let's yeah. look. Mm -hmm. Here's the examples. This one looks like the one that we're trying to do. So let's see what they did. Do you see how these, mm -hmm. so being able, and then as I'm doing that, I'm learning it too and going, oh, that totally makes sense now. Right, it yeah. It yeah. to me at 16, <laughs> but it totally does now at 45. Uh -huh. And it's funny how the older <laughs> you are and the more time your own brain has taken to develop, you guys, right. everything yes. is yeah. easier to learn mm -hmm. when you're older. So don't fall for this idea of, oh, I can't teach this because I was bad at it myself in school. Right. You're yeah. older now. It's going to make more sense now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you come alongside your child to help them as you work through those, you know, those little sample questions mm -hmm. or those examples and things and you, you know, say, I give up. Let's go find the video on YouTube that teaches it. You're right. going to watch and it's going to click. And you're gonna, oh, mm -hmm. now I get that. So many things about math for me that have been like that. I'm, my other daughter's in pre-algebra. So I'm learning geometry at so, all of my yeah, high school. Yeah. It's coming back to me. <laughs> I, I had to do that with my first one, too. And I got back all the way up to calculus, you know. I, oh, I, I, oh, and I did a you. year of calculus with my oldest before. I mean, the, the, I have a degree wow. in physics. But, yes, oh, that my math God. is yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my I thing. with algebra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... But yeah, but still, I had to redo it because yeah. it's just, yeah. Um, we did have a, question, a couple of questions about math curriculum. I know mm -hmm. on our website, it's bedhomeschool.com. If you go under the curriculum section, you'll find a whole page on math curriculum. Um, when Lisa was asking about a well-rounded math program, I'd say look into Unlock Math. Um, that's one program. Um, a Plus Tutorsoft is also one that's listed on there that is more of an online, because um, Michelle was asking about online um, programs for math mm -hmm. for you. Um, yeah, elephant learning isn't specifically a, um, a curriculum. It is to help fill in the gaps, and it's basically a play-based um, math instruction that fills in. It, it's not a curriculum per se. But, but again, you'll find a lot of different resources on our website. And, um, and yeah, there's, there's ways to learn different things. When I, I taught my one son geometry, I found out that you can fold paper and actually prove every single, single algorithm in geometry. And I thought, how fun is this? Oh, um, awesome. And, and, you know, we were just taught all this analytical instead of the actual or the theoretical versus the analytical. So, mm -hmm trying to do all those those movements of things in your head for kids that that don't see visually is extremely hard so you have that option to to do things you know we only have one student so play with it have fun with yeah. it and um uh, michelle said thank you you're you're welcome michelle um so so yeah that's that's why we have the resources on our website and allison tell us about your your website goodschooling.net and what parents can find there to help them on their homeschool journey sure so the biggest resource that we have on our website is our blog and it is very different from a lot of the homeschooling blogs out there it is very focused i don't blog every week i think i've only got maybe 13 articles up there, but they are mm -hmm. very content rich and they're specifically focused on helping parents make the transition into homeschooling and then homeschool right. successfully. And um, the one article I can think of that would probably be, well, actually the two that I would most suggest to folks that are watching this stream would be my article on de-schooling, mm -hmm. which is the yes, most important, like I said at the, the beginning, beginning. Yep. most important mm -hmm. step you can take. And then I've got an article on homeschooling children with unique needs. And I think the, the biggest point I try to make there is the fact that you are equipped as their parent. You mm -hmm. are equipped. I know you don't feel like you are, right. but you are. 
So um, check those out. I have a membership where I work more closely with families and help them. Um, We're making that shift really into this focus on simplified homeschooling. Mm. So if that's something that really resonates with you, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll let you know um, Mm -hmm. kind of where that's where that's going, because we're kind of in the process of redoing all that right now. But yeah, yeah, just same as us. We just launched a a brand new community (laughs) on the Empowered Homeschool. School network, which is at empoweredhomeschool.org. Um, and so you can find our groups there and also reserve spots for for these broadcasts, which are free, but they'll give you reminders. And so if your life right. gets busy and you're like, oh, I didn't want to miss that, <laughs> you're, you'll get an email. Ha <laughs> 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 Makes it a lot easier than going, darn, I missed that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have reminders to want to take my vitamins, <laughs> you know, oh my gosh. and eat my meals. That's how crazy my life secretary. is. Yes, yeah, exactly. All these reminders that just popped up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So um, you're not alone. <laughs> we're, we're there with you. Um, so thank you so much, Allison. You've um, just shared so much wisdom with us, and it's been um, it's been inspiring. I hope, and for I know it's just been good to talk about these subjects because I know we get these questions all the time. And um, so now you just send people to this video <laughs> and to the podcast when that comes out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, so thanks for, for taking time. I know you have a crazy schedule right now, and um, that's why I'm we had to switch our time. Make it. I'm glad. But yeah, I I'm glad that we made this work. So, Thank you. Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, th- I want to thank our audience um, for joining us also yeah, on this thank episode. You, yes. Um, you know, this is just one of the many resources we have at Sped Homeschool that we make available to families um, who homeschool. Um, students with struggles. Uh, And I also want to thank Bookshark for sponsoring this episode. Remember to visit their website at bookshark.com to check out and see if they are a good fit for teaching your struggling learner at home. And um, next week, we're going to continue this theme. And my guests are going to talk about creating a unique homeschooling learning oasis. Um, As I was talking to these um, these guys, they just said, your homeschool has to look different. And so like Allison and I have been talking about, you know, um, yes. And how do you actually make that an oasis in your home versus, uh, this is sit down, do your stuff, you know, and, and it's almost like this, this regimented, everybody hates mm. to, to <laughs> our mornings because <laughs> this is what we're forced to do. Let's make it fun. Let's make it something enjoyable and restful. So, yeah, that's um, awesome. so that's what we're going to talk about next week because your child's not going to learn if they feel mm. forced and if it feels like it's just this heavy burden and it's not going to be fun for you either. So, right. um, so we definitely want to be diving into that. So I hope you can join me then for for that um, broadcast but in the meantime make sure to stay connected with us on our website at spedhomeschool.com and um, also on our new learning and community platform empoweredhomeschool.org and of course don't forget to visit allison's um, resources at goodschooling.net so um, thanks again everybody for joining us and um, lisa wrapped up said i can't wait to jump on your blog allison (laughs) thank you i hope it helps and thank you so much for having me on, Peggy. I love it. Oh, it's been great having you back, Allison. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we made this work. So, um, yeah, always a pleasure. So keep up the good work. Um, thank you. There's, you there's too. so many new homeschooling families <laughs> that just need you. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next time right here on Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Mm-hmm.